Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Alex's Afternoon Art Show. Today we are going back to Marvel because we've been doing a lot of DC characters recently uh, and we're doing Elektra, uh, which is going to be a little bit of a different tune of things I suppose because um, sort of like last time with Catwoman we're doing a, a moderate redesign. Um, I'm not going too crazy with it, we're sort of sticking to what the kind of classic design is but I'm, I'm merging in some elements because if there's one character who has I would say probably the most disparate kinds of designs it's Electra. she has probably some of the most varied and random designs that I can remember uh, they are as I said they are varied uh, and they they vary wildly in quality too uh, so let's let's hope this is one of the better ones um so our kind of, I, I suppose our topic today here is uh, posing, because that is the thing that was the most difficult about this, was doing the pose uh, in the base sketch. So we'll talk a little bit about that after I roll the intro, uh, which is actually right now. So yeah, I'll be, after I roll the intro, yeah, I'll talk about that stuff. So yeah, intro. <laughs> Okay, so this is what I've got. Um, as I said, mostly just kind of sticking to the classic design. Uh, so we've still got the kind of one shoulder, kind of sort of one piece dress thing uh, is sort of still what I'm going for here. And then there's the sort of arm bandages and stuff like that. So the way that we're kind of merging this is that um, so I'm, I'm doing, you can probably see it here, there's like an undersuit which I'm doing here which will maybe uh, give her a little bit more going on because uh, New York is not a very warm city. So uh, mostly going around naked is uh, probably not good. Um, and yeah, I find that a lot of Electra's designs are a little too skimpy. It, it, it's a it's a consistent thing that it's like eh, you probably give her a little bit more clothing. But yeah, th this is the thing. It kind of varies because again, there's the more modern ones of where she's got the face scarf, um, and that's only obviously the only thing that she has out are her arms. That's the modern design that I remember at least. There's also the her daredevil design, which is slightly different, and then there's the one from the TV show, which is sort of in keeping with the more modern design with the face scarf and stuff like that but i said uh, okay i'll i'll try and keep the the bandana in there now i i will say i have to change the length of the uh the wrapping on the bandana here because this is obviously too thick it should be thinner than that so i'll thin that out as i'm doing the details uh same way this sign needs to be longer because this one's pretty long um so yes um pose it so, as per usual, this is a, a pose made up of other pieces of reference. Uh, so, or made up of random pieces of reference. And that, then I kind of coalesced into this. So, yeah, the, the primary thing which I wanted here was a kind of like a leaping pose where she's kind of like jumping forward like that. So I have her holding the one side backwards and then there's the one forward. Um, then also a big element of this here is her hair. So typically, um, it kind of varies, again, because Electra's designs vary quite wildly. Sometimes she has the straightest hair you could ever imagine, and sometimes she has incredibly curly hair. So I've gone instead for the curly hair because I think it looks a bit more interesting, especially whenever it's kind of pluming out like this. It looks a little bit more interesting whenever it's like that. Uh, and I suppose it contrasts with a little bit more of the other characters who I tend to draw who typically have kind of uh, slightly messy to straight hair. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing here. I'm giving her the curly hair, just I suppose is a little bit more interesting. I'm going to be doing a background for this, but nothing too complicated. I'll just do the shape of buildings and then a moon. And that's mostly going to be it. I'll just put a moon like over here and then some buildings down there. And that's kind of going to be our background. Again, as I say, nothing too complicated. But that's kind of a... That's a thing which I'll do at the end. Uh, I'm not going to bother doing that anytime soon. I'll do that probably after I've done the colors. I might even... I'll do it probably during the colors section. Um, but yeah, again, I tried to incorporate uh, as many elements of Electra's normal design as I could. Um, so she's got this undersuit, which is supposed to look more like um, somewhere between the modern suit, which has the face scarf, and then uh, the, the TV show design, where it's just kind of very similar, but it's got these kind of pointed shoulders. 
I, I didn't do the pointed shoulders, I kind of stuck to just mostly like an undersuit sort of thing. And then the robes are kind of like over it, and I think that looks a little bit more interesting. Uh, and there's obviously these kind of little seams in the undersuit of where things should be moving and all that stuff. So, uh, again, it's uh, the idea being is that it's kind of like a it's a very thin undersuit. Uh, or it, it'd be, I don't even want to say it's a thin one, it's, uh, it's skin tight. So you're going to be able to see stuff like the little bits of muscle and all this stuff still moving. It's not going to be so strong that you can't see this stuff or that there's like a ton of obvious wrinkles or any of that stuff like that. So I might maybe throw in one like around here, there'll be a little wrinkle there, maybe one around the knee, stuff like that, but nothing too intense. Maybe one around again, like the, the, the areas where things should be sort of uh, stretching a little bit. Um, but yeah, the kind of major stuff is that I obviously need to thin that out and then I'll obviously need to do those little bits. I will say the hair is probably going to be the thing that occupies the most amount of time here uh, because it's it's a lot of what is going on here. She's got very, very big hair. Um, but yes. Oh yeah, I nearly forgot to put in her earring. I actually had to go in and redo that like last night. Uh, is put in her earrings because she does have them. Uh, she has these weird like kind of square earrings. Uh, are a consistent element of her design. Um, but yeah, as I say, this I don't think this will be too difficult. This should probably be reasonably easy as things go. Um, uh, and that is good because the next one we're going to be doing is very difficult. Not even difficult, but it will be time consuming. But uh, yes, so this one shouldn't be too bad. I don't expect it to be too difficult. Um, but yeah, as far as the elements of posing and stuff like that go, uh, most of, again, yeah, it's yeah, sort of difficult, I suppose, to talk about posing with these because I tend to do all the kind of hard work beforehand. So it's a case of where the, the kind of, the primary stuff is done before I've actually even started doing the, uh, the episode because it's all in the base sketch. But um, yeah, so, there's a few elements, as I say, which I will have to change. A few elements which are probably going to need a little... Oh yeah, something which I thought would be worth noting is the fact that I give her the little kind of ninja toe dent in her boots. They're still boots, uh, but they've got the little bits of wrap around parts of them. And then yeah, there's the little toe indent at the top, which I think looks interesting. Um, and there's those little elements which I tried to intersperse, which look a little bit more interesting, which have a little bit more going on. I think at least um, but yeah yeah I think that's uh, that's enough preamble I think I'll probably get started on the details and then I'll be back to do the colors obviously and that's whenever I'll do all my background stuff like that and largely I think color palette wise we're probably looking at something obviously very red uh, but a kind of a uh, red and blue tone I think I think I'll make the the kind of background quite blue toned Sort of like how I did with the Daredevil one that I did recently of where he's leaping. Uh, the background on that was very blue-toned. I think I'll probably go for something sort of like that, where it's, cut, it's quite blue-toned. Maybe it has like a little bit of red at the bottom kind of seeping up, but it'll be mostly blue-toned. Um, and yeah, I think that's probably what I'm going to do for that. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I might have to reshape this side because it looks a little broad. Like that's practically a short sword at this rate. Uh, because the blade on it is perhaps yeah, a little broad. Um, but yeah, I suppose that is a thing that varies. I think actually this side is the right size. This is the one that could stand to maybe be a little shorter, a little bit less than this, because this is maybe a little much. I'll think about it. I'll think about it, I suppose, because it'll be something I'll have to address soon enough. Um, but yeah, is there anything else I need to go over before we start? I don't think there is. I don't think there is. I've gone on for like an extra two minutes after I said I was going to start, but yeah, yeah. Because there was things like obviously the hair, obviously like dipping below the bandana is a thing which sometimes artists do. Sometimes artists have it be that it comes down specifically at the sides and it doesn't, there's no like mess to it at all. It comes down in like perfect straight hair and it is very, very straight. Uh, but here I've obviously gone for something a little bit messier, a little bit curlier, so I've had it kind of 
live down in in sort of less than perfect lumps and all this uh, so it kind of or yeah less than perfect clumps of hair that kind of fall down this bit tucks behind the ear and then stuff like that so this bit kind of falls down directly in the middle um but yeah i think that's probably enough preamble i think i'm good to start so i think i will do these details and then i'll be back to do the colors and all that stuff afterwards so yeah Okay, so that is our details done. That was a longer process than I was expecting. That's two and a half hours. 
So yeah, I suppose that's what uh, that's what this amount of hair will do, because hair is probably one of the more time-consuming things that I draw, typically. Uh, I did a little bit of an alteration to the kind of primary dress part. Uh, I added these kind of little bits of uh, like overlapping, like kind of fold in there, uh, so that it sort of uh, so that it sort of kind of keeps the idea of the. Um, as my brain catches it. So it sort of keeps the idea of the kind of wrapping that's around the rest of this, like on the arms and then along these little bands and stuff like that that are on the legs. All those little things that it kind of carries over that kind of same, uh, that same kind of visual look. So it has these little folds going over things and like the kind of sort of lightly bandaged look. Uh, I don't want to obviously go too far with it because that's A, a lot of effort, and B, I don't normally like how it looks all that much. Uh, so I decided to try and keep it simple in that regard. So yeah, this section now, we've got the colors. So for Electra's skin tone, I'll probably give her actually a darker skin tone because uh, that's that's one which I tend to prefer is, I think, uh, I think yeah, I prefer the darker skin tone with Electra. Um, it's something which again, it wildly varies. Sometimes you got a, she's got a darker skin tone, sometimes you got a very pale skin tone. It really just completely depends on the artist. Uh, depends on the artist's tastes, uh, and here I'll be going for a darker skin tone because I think that uh, that matches a little better here. Um, but uh, yeah, so I will be including yes in this section will also be the background, which again, all I'm going to be doing is using my polyagonal lasso tool just doing that sort of thing and then this is going to be how I do my buildings basically something like that that's obviously a very unpleasant looking version of it but uh, yeah that's going to be the general idea I'm just going to slap that together just so you get an idea of what I'm talking about uh, and then I'll throw a moon in the background which will just be like that not that ovular obviously but um yeah not that ovoid but um yeah that's the general idea of what I'd be going for there. I was thinking of having it be like a sort of cloud covered moon sort of thing, maybe. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what I do with that. Because this is obviously, yeah, I'll go with moonlight. Because that's more interesting looking. Because uh, the way that I did Daredevil was like sort of early morning. So it's got that kind of red glow rising from the bottom of the frame. Uh, I might do a sort of idea like that here. Uh, I might incorporate something like that here, but I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what I do. Um, because, yeah, there'll be the buildings. I think I'll make the buildings like a dark red color. Uh, and then the moon will probably be a sort of like kind of warmer yellow color sort of thing. Uh, warmer yellow to potentially kind of colder blue. It'll depend on the color tones that we're going for because... Actually, no, it'll more so depend on where in the sky I decide to put it because we're going for a, a, a blue sort of tone, the background. And the buildings might have a redder tone just so they stand out more uh, from the sky because the sky will have this kind of blue down into sort of maybe slight tinge of red or pink kind of tone going on in the background. So depending on where I decide to put the moon, whether the moon's up here or down here, it might determine what color I decide to make. I might make it a colder color if it's higher, because then it'll be higher into the blue tones of the background. So that would make more sense in that instance. And because of that, that will obviously influence our lighting, so the moon will be will act as what will give us our rim light, which will be a white kind of rim light, most likely. Uh, and then I'll kind of give soft light along the front here, and then that means the darker parts will be on the left. So that'll be how I do that. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, largely the colors gonna be pretty easy because it's mostly just skin, hair, red, black. Because the undersuit, I'm gonna make that black. Uh, the kind of yeah, like undersuit. That makes yeah, because that's I'm, that's being derived from all those things which have it, like the Daredevil show, like the. Uh, uh, like the more modern design, that's kind of where all that stuff derives. So it's, it's, uh, or that's where this idea derives from. So in, in those things, it's typically a kind of a black color is what her kind of, uh, is what the, the bodysuit version of things is like. So yeah, that's what I'm going to go with, um, with the colors. And so without further ado, 
I forgot to mention that I did change the shape of the sign. You may have noticed that I put a little uh, harsh black line that was just to signify where it ended. Probably could have intuited that. Um, but yeah, this is still a little thicker than this one, uh, which it probably shouldn't be, but it's, uh, I don't, it doesn't matter all that much. Uh, it doesn't matter enough for me to really fix it anyway. Uh, I also thinned out the kind of uh, loose uh, ties on the bandana as well because they were way too thick before. They're still kind of thick. Uh, they're almost as thick as the ties on the kind of sash, which they shouldn't be, but you know, again, it's it, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, just so long as they're thinner and they are thinner. Uh, so yeah, anyways, without further ado, I will carry on and I will do the colors and also the background. But yeah, after that, I will be back to do the painted shading. So yeah, anyways. Okay, that's our colors. So now it is time for the painted shading and there's gonna be a lot of extra background stuff that I got to do in this section as well, because I'll have to do my little erasing up the buildings thing just so that we get the kind of just general edge and all that stuff uh, is kind of really all I need from the buildings. Uh, I'm also gonna be doing some clouds in the sky and then sort of obscuring the moon a little bit behind clouds uh, via a paintbrush. I was considering kind of just drawing in the cloud cover, but I thought that would look kind of bad. Uh, so, especially whenever I was going to be using paintbrushes anyways. So I said, no, I just prefer to do it this way. Um, and so I did some detailing on the moon as well. Because I figured that it'd look all right. And I like how it looks. Um, I actually think now that the colors are on, I, uh, I actually like... Uh, I like the the way that the kind of undersuit mixes with the uh, the, the kind of dress thing uh, a lot more actually. I actually like how that kind of interacts because uh, it's an interesting kind of color composition. It's still predominantly red, which is a problem which I feel like a lot of Electra's modern designs have is that they do mute the red quite a bit, uh, even though that is that is her primary color. Um, I mean, in the original design, it's just red. Uh, there's no more than that. There's just the red. Uh, that's all that's part of our costume. Uh, so yeah, I think the the black does a little bit to kind of balance that out. Uh, and I like, I kind of like how that looks. But uh, yeah, so what do I have to do? I have to erase up the buildings, I have to do cloud cover, and I have to do our paint shading on the character. Uh, but largely there's not actually, as I said before, there's not that many colors on the characters so that that really shouldn't take too much, uh, take too much time. Uh, so realistically, the rest of this should be kind of quick. We're already three and a half hours in, so we're already 
uh, tracking to be a, a little bit of a longer one this time. Not even necessarily a longer one, but a kind of a normal length one, like last episode. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, anyways, I will do this painted shading, and then I'll be back to do the detailed shading and the light line, and that'll basically be us. So yeah. Okay, that's the painted shading done, and obviously all our background bits as well. So I obviously went through and I did the, um, I did this little bit of kind of uh, cloudy, sh uh, cloudy shading around the uh, the moon. So it's got this kind of like haze over it, like the like the moon on a cloudy night. So that's the sort of thing I did there. I also did the kind of little bit of blending of the buildings, so they kind of sort of. It, it, it disappear a little bit into the bottom of the into the bottom of the screen, to the bottom of the shading, or the bottom of the uh, the sky, in the background, uh, and obviously yeah. So I've applied this sort of like odd angle to the painted shading here on our figure, so it comes up from a kind of like this is sort of the area of this uh, of the kind of I suppose if you think about it, this is where the kind of street light is coming from, but it's hitting around an angle, so it's kind of like you're getting it across this sort of side of her. And then along the back here, it's obviously darker, and that's where I'll be applying the white light line from the moon. Is along this side, uh, and yeah, along the back of her. Uh, and so yeah, I'll just be following this sort of thing whenever I'm doing the detailed shading here now. Uh, and yeah, I suppose um, I don't think there's actually much I need to preface with the detailed shading because I'll just do the light line and everything in this section as well. I'll do my white light line. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's actually a huge amount I need to do to yet uh, preface this. Uh, a lot of this will probably come together more again, as I as I usually say, in the gradient maps and the texture. The texture will do a lot for our background, I think, especially with these buildings. They're a little too clean. They're a little too perfect, even with the kind of with the uh, the erasing up. It's still a little too clean, I'd say, a little too perfect. Uh, it's not got that kind of grittiness that it should have, especially whenever it's so flat. Uh, it should have a little bit more kind of grit to it and again the sky will kind of get a little bit more filtered down with the um the painted shading uh, honestly that's even something now i was thinking about lowering the opacity but i don't think that's actually necessary um because like it is quite dark at the top uh you know i actually will lower the opacity i'll lower it down to like 80 percent and we'll have to do it here as well this is also uh, a layer like that so it needs to sort of do it there as well it's still pretty dark but that's just because this is layering on top of this so that's sort of necessary uh, or it's it's gonna be a little darker at that side of the screen anyways because there's two two layers kind of interacting with each other there but yeah anyways i won't dawdle too much longer and i will just start the detailed shading and obviously the light line as well so yeah, we'll do this and then I'll be back to do the gradient maps and everything and wrap up. So yeah.
Okay, that is uh, our detailed shading our light line done. I chose not to do the light line along this arm because uh, logically based on where the light is coming from, the hair should be kind of blocking that. So you wouldn't really be getting the rim light there. You might get it up here, tiny bit, but it's not really all that important. Uh, it has suddenly gotten tremendously dark, even though it's not actually super light. So uh, yeah, I'll just, I'm not gonna bother standing up to turn on the lights for the last five minutes of this. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. Um, but yeah, so I think that kind of helped a lot. The light line anyways did, definitely. Uh, of just kind of illuminating everything with that nice rim light. But yeah, I will do these gradient maps here. So let's have a look, gradient map. So I wanted to go for something very blue and red toned. So our darkest is gonna be our kind of bluey color, something like here, that's a bit more like indigo, but I think we're gonna go with that anyways. And then our lightest, be a sort of ready color I think something like this not like super sharp red but like a soft red uh, and then here we'll go for something about in the middle of that about here maybe even more down there maybe a little bluer even uh, right okay let's have a look overlay uh, yeah it certainly uh, makes those reds a lot pinker uh, that's gonna happen. Uh, so a soft light is more accurate to what we want. I'd say turn that down to about 60 because we don't want it to be too intense. Last few have been going for 70, 70% 70 opacity on the layers, but I don't think we need that because it's pretty intense already. So I'll turn this one to a luminosity, make this one 20% on the opacity. Again, we don't want it to be too crazy that will make things quite a bit darker but it does make that moon pop a little bit more which is nice I suppose um, right and then we'll make another one which is going to be a color burn which will just kind of bring out our colors and again it makes that moon pop quite nicely uh, so yeah that's our gradient maps now again it does darken things quite a bit all these gradient maps um, so we're gonna grab our texture and that should do a little bit at least for brightening things back up so let me grab this texture but yeah the gradient maps have kind of yeah they make they, they i feel like the uh, the lighting here has kind of popped a little bit more and the uh, uh the moon has that sort of softer glow now to it i don't know if that's something to do with the specifics of the way that the gradient maps here interact because there's three different kind of gradient maps going on which are all interacting in different ways so that's kind of I feel like why that's happened. So now this should again look at how this kind of like uh, bleeds out a little bit more from the clouds. Now this uh, texture, so we're gonna have this one be like 20% because again we don't want it to be super intense. But we want it to kind of bring that stuff out. Again, we want it to kind of help blend down these clouds into the sky and then help with the kind of again adding some imperfection to those buildings because they are quite sharp. But yes, so how does that look on our character? It's subtle, it is quite subtle. We don't want it to be too intense, but it does, yeah, again, it highlights the kind of glow of the moon, which is nice. And again, the moon has a little bit more blueiness to it now. I did give it a soft kind of blue skew, was sort of what I did with it. It wasn't too intense, but I gave it like a soft kind of blue skew uh, that I feel like has been emphasized a little bit more. Uh, by all the gradient maps and then also the texture. The texture kind of brought that out because of the glow. Because it emphasizes the glow that a little bit more. But uh, yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was Electro. Oh, oh sorry. Um, but yeah, that was that. I think that was a fun one. It was interesting, it was a little different than, uh, than some of the other ones I've been doing recently in that it's had a, at least a little bit of a background because the last couple haven't really had any in terms of a background. They haven't really had any any background, anything like that going on. Um, and yeah, especially with the kind of redesigning sort of thing. Again, that was sort of present in the last episode, but not quite as much as I think it is here. Because for the most part, the Catwoman design I think was a pretty standard one. Uh, for the most part, it's just a few details which were a little different. Um, but granted, I feel like everyone draws Catwoman completely differently, whereas Electra, it's a case where there's the one design that people tend to actually like, which is the classic design. Uh, and then there's 
various kind of newer ones which some people seem to like a little bit more various other ones which people don't really like and then again there's so many different lecture designs that vary wildly in quality some are pretty good some of them are really bad so again it's it's a complete grab shoot i suppose with Electra's designs uh, but i feel like i've done one here which isn't too bad because it keeps a lot of the elements of the the kind of newer stuff while also incorporating the older bits in ways that i think are interesting uh, but yeah, I think that is us. I think I'm good to call it there. I'm, I'm content with this one. Uh, I'm happy to wrap it up here. So yeah, uh, this has been a slightly longer one. This is four hours and 40 minutes. I say slightly longer. It's within the kind of realm of what I would call a normal length. Um, but yeah, with all that said, I will, I will wrap up and then I will leave you so i'll do my outro here um so yeah if you like the video do whatever it is that you normally do whether that be liking or not i of course prefer if you liked it but i can't make you do that so i'll just suggest it politely um same deal if you want to subscribe i would of course prefer if you did can't make you do it so long as you don't do anything negative i'm happy um and yeah so if you've got any suggestions for a drawing you'd like to see me do in the future you could leave a comment politely worded uh because if it isn't i'm not gonna even bother <laughs> i'm not gonna even look at it i'm gonna completely disregard the idea entirely um and yeah so if you choose to watch the next video i'll see you next time and so that is us so i'll say goodbye and i'll leave you so bye bye <laughs>